1500 pound motor in a boat that's in the water. I ain't a boat mechanic. All I had to get it out is a crane truck. Why is it beeping? I'm not a crane operator. It's off. Get the motor free, you pick it up with the crane, you put it in your pickup truck, you strap it to the pickup truck, you drive it to the shop. That's what we're doing. I'm a full-time commercial crab fisherman, and this boat here, the Southern Girl, is my lifeline. This is the thing that makes me all the money to put a roof over me and my wife's head. If you don't take care of it, it won't take care of you. And I've put about 5,000 hours on this engine. It's time to pull the motor out. It's gonna take it down to Crisfield to the guys at TNS that work on these engines. They're gonna go over the whole thing. There's nothing alarmingly wrong with this motor. 375 horsepower Caterpillar 3208. But the end of last year has given me a couple problems here and there. I just want to be able to really trust it. If this boat doesn't run, I can't go to work and then me and nobody around me can make a living. Margins in crabbing are pretty razor thin as it is. I do not want to wait until this motor breaks on its own. We only have a certain amount of days a year where we can go out and catch crabs to make our entire year's living. Could not afford to waste any of the days in season. The roof was meant to come off in two pieces originally. The roof has gotten really old and I've had to repair it. You turn the roof into one giant piece and fiberglass is on the top. So if I can avoid having to cut the roof in half and then rejoin it, that'd be fantastic. And we're gonna put it on a floating platform over here because we do not have a lot of space at this marina. It's not in terrible shape, but it's certainly not in the very good shape. It's definitely got some wet spots and in a lot of areas we've tried to repair it over the years. Now we gotta get the platform and the old platform this here pontoon boat. We're gonna try to put the roof from there to here, but then I can also worry about my roof sink. Almost lost it. Pro tip, pick a day where it's blowing 40 miles an hour to run a crane. I need a bigger hammer. Pouring rain the past couple days, everything is wet, freezing cold, it's super I windy. Just that one off. This is kind of a miserable day. <laughs> one of my biggest concerns about this whole project is I have zero idea how much it's gonna cost. And I'm not gonna know until I get there. Basically living off of the money that we saved during the summertime. You have to be very wise about how we spend it. Snapped off about every single half inch bolt and I've dropped half the hardware in the water because I can't feel my freaking finger. This is the crane truck we're gonna use to hopefully pull the motor and pull the roof off. That's a motor that they adapt to marine use pretty often. That's really the motor I need in my boat. That thing would fly. All right, we're in business. It's very useful and it's vintage. I hope I'm useful in vintage one day. Ooh, all right. Ooh. Oh my God. Terry, hopefully I don't run over anybody's car. Hit the brakes a little hard. The air brakes are weird. I don't know where I'm going. The reverse camera's broken on account of this thing being from like the 80s. Why is it beeping? Is that how you do this? Oh. <laughs> Wrong lever. All right, I think we got the boat over far enough to get the crane over to the middle of the roof. Look at that thing. Now that is some interesting rigging there. We're gonna see if it works. You what that boat looks a lot bigger without a roof on it. it looks huge i got down here and get ready to pull the motor out oh forgot my impact gun okay this motor is from i would say 1974 i think the block but it's been remanned by tns marina i have to get this thing out of here pretty quickly by myself. I have to go to the Commercial Fishing Show Expo in Ocean City this weekend. Two hours of daylight left. I'm going to try to get the motor unhooked and then hopefully Monday I can pull it up. Just stick it in my truck, ski daddle down to Crisfield. So I never really have a great plan of attack. I'm just going to try to start from the back of the motor and work my way forward. Leave the starter attached over the weekend. All my bilge pumps, everything still run because they're not hooked 
directly to the batteries. I can't believe I actually have a real tool kit. Somebody bought this for me off my Amazon wish list. Never actually had a full tool kit, so really appreciate it. Super nice of you. So these older diesel motors, nothing in terms of emissions, which made them really easy to work on and stupid reliable. That's why we use them still today in marine use. Just a 90 degree bend straight up through the sky. So no mufflers, nothing. You put dinosaurs in and you get noise that just comes out of here. I always try to make sure I take all the little bolts, pieces, and washers, and I never label them, and I always put them somewhere that I don't remember. This job is no different, really. That'll be fine. No two crab boats are built the same. They're literally built by old guys in barns on the Eastern Shore. This boat was built by Buddy Hampton out of Ocean City, Maryland, I'm pretty sure. It was a 1969 Trojan houseboat that's been cut down into a crab boat. It's everything in it, all the running gear and such, is custom, uh, which is perfect because I'm good at making custom stuff out of junk. Look at that, it's alive. So the motor I had in here was a 320 and I honestly regret not putting another 320 in here because when you go to 375, you have to raw water cool, which means you have to use the water around the boat to run it through the engine, through a heat exchanger and then out the side. That has given me a lot of trouble in the past few years. Wish I would have just stuck with a 320, but I learned a lesson. I had to go bigger and faster and ended up being slower and more expensive. Story of my life. I started in an eight foot rowboat when I was 11. Now I've outgrown the Southern girl. Stick with it. If you have something you like doing, find something you love, make it a job. <laughs> Actually, I don't I don't suggest doing that. That's a really hard road to take. You really gotta be a hard-headed, stupid son of a gun sometimes to make that work, which I am. This rubber stuff when it's cold out is just an absolute bear. Come on, you dirty son. Ten pounds of sugar for a five pound sack. Well, three, but one is stripped out, so two. It's probably something I should have them look at, but I'm afraid it's gonna be like Bill, $250 helic oil. Get this starter out of here. Yeah. Have the roll water off, gear pump out, starter off, cables disconnected. Now we're gonna go for the shaft coupler. Those bolts that hold the prop shaft to the transmission gotta come out. One thing that is a benefit to the boats ah, that we use called dead rises, the motors usually sit pretty well above the deck floor or the ceiling as they call it. It's convenient for working on them. It's inconvenient in terms of space, but in the Chesapeake, it's the shallowest estuary in the world. We need boats that do not draft a lot of water. And drafting means how much boat is below the water line. For instance, my boat drafts just under three feet of water. That means under the water line, there's three foot of boat. And if you run in water that is shallower than three feet, the bottom of your boat will meet the bottom of the bay. Typically not ideal in my experience. Speaking from lots of experience. They build them where the engines basically sit on the deck. The motor box is what we call the box that goes around the engine and it's used as a table or working surface on every crab boat I've ever seen. I've heard many a time before that I'm an old soul just passing through. If you ask my wife or any of my friends, I'm basically a 65 year old man. Just fine by me. I, I Who doesn't like working on boats? I don't actually like working on boats. Work boats are just badass. And to have the freedom to do whatever you want, whenever you want, that's what really drew me to crabbing, you know? It's like the Wild West out there. It's between you and the crabs. And there's no BSing results in crabbing. You can tell who's gonna make it and who's not gonna make it. And I like that. It's almost like the potential for an even playing field. And if you ask any waterman, I'm sure they would all say a similar thing where you don't really know why you're out there doing it, but it's kind of just what you do. It's just... <laughs> It's part of who you are. You know, it makes for a hard life for some people. I just refuse to do anything else. I'll fight to my death to be, have the right to crab and fish. I mean, you ain't never gonna get me out of the fishery. There's other commercial fishermen watching me doing this. They can relate. I guarantee they've done this same thing to their boat. Just average waterman activity. This is light work. The shaft coupler is undone. These are the bolts. I'll be sure to lose those. I gotta get these engine mounts loose. These engine mounts actually I built when I got this transmission. That's a piece of C-channel and a piece of plate. Man, I remember when I drilled these holes for the motor mounts, I just got super lucky. There's studs that stick up that the bolt has to fit over. And I mean, this thing has to be very, very well aligned or you're going to tear up all kinds of running gear. I think I put grease or something on the tip of the stud and I lowered the motor mount, bolted to the gear on it, pulled it off and I drilled through the grease or something like that. Like some way to mark it from the bottom because I did not how to measure it. It's worked so far and Actually, they look 10 times better than the motor mounts that came in the boat. Try with the persuading hammer. Yeah. 
I'll say winter does suck, but nothing is worse than working on a hot cast iron motor in a hot, wet, humid engine bay when it's a hundred and freaking one degrees outside. I'd rather do it in 30 degrees any day. <sighs> So on the front of the motor here, we got two more motor mounts. We got a raw water line we got to get off, fuel line, and some wires. Whoops. Rather not spend any of that time in the hospital. I do prefer to work on big engines instead of like little two strokes. Think of it as like Duplo blocks for children. When you have the intelligence of me, simpler is better. Now this here, that's how you know it's getting serious. Right. We are on the fuel system now. I'm definitely going to forget which one is feed and which one's returns. I'm going to stick this crab pot clip on the feed line. You guys can remind me of that when I'm trying to put this motor back in. Sometimes with fuel lines, it's just easier to cut them. Zip ties are always something you want to have around in great quantity when doing any kind of work, house, your motor, your marriage. All right, fuel system is unhooked. I had this motor ready to pull. I spoke too soon because as soon as I went to put the motor box back together, I forgot like three things that I didn't attach. Check that screwdriver out. That's when you have a big one and you, you need a little one to get hose clamps undone. You gotta make one that works. Oh, look at that. Band clamps ever do that? I knew I spoke too soon. It went too well. My custom screwdriver is great for band clamps and terrible for getting hoses off. That is one thing that is far harder in the cold. <sighs> It's getting hoses off. It seems like they should just fall right off and they just never do. It's always funny to see her without a roof. She looks way longer boat with no roof. I'm definitely putting my toolbox in, in the cabin. I would certainly not want this thing to get wet. We're back from the fishing show at Ocean City, and I can't thank everybody enough for coming out and seeing me. Really cool for me to do things like that because it really turns you guys from just a number on a screen into real people. I love seeing you guys. I love doing stuff like that. It's finally time to pull the engine out of Southern Girl, and it's snowing. I'm gonna see if the crane truck will start. Oh, nice. You know how you solve the problem of running out of fuel? You just put tape over the gauge. Now I'm going to attempt to move the truck without running it off the pier. We left off where I had hooked the starter back up and I'll unhook the terminals on the back and then I have to sort these wires. Pretty sure this big wad of tape, I have all the wires labeled and I have a super fancy intricate wiring diagram from the last time I pulled this engine when I made the wiring harness. I'm pretty sure I put it here in my filing cabinet. Here it is. Can't believe I haven't lost this yet. The technical care that I took the last time I did this job, I double wrapped it in electrical tape and rubber gloves to ensure moisture does not intrude. Who needs a 32 pin plug when you got rubber gloves and zip ties? That's a wiring harness there, buddy. Dang, to be fair, it worked really good. In all of my infinite wisdom, when I made the harness, all I used was green wire. That was really smart. I'm gonna take some pictures. We were all labeled. Turns out you don't even need to know what the wires do if you just label them. Side quest, we dropped a shackle nut into the valley of the motor. Now I lost the magnet into the valley of the motor. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Maybe the magnet will hold the nut still and it won't rattle. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> that's good work there. <laughs> you screw that up and I'll screw this up over here. We got all the bases covered. Almost had the magnet out. This doesn't solve our original problem, but. It solves the second problem. <laughs> uh, working, oh, got it. Got it now. With the kebab skewers. Moment of truth, no going back now. We're about to hook the crane, the motor, and see if we can't uh, break something. That is a lot of money dangling from a crane right now. It's not really ever a sight you want to see, but the necessary thing. All right, we've got it out of the boat and over to the truck. We're gonna have to find some blocking. That thing is seriously heavy. Rather knock it off here than on Route 50. Got the engine in my truck and out of the boat. We didn't even drop it yet. We still have to get it out of the truck in Crystal. Oof. 
That's sketchy. Probably gonna lag it to these blocks, strap it to the truck, so it ain't gonna fall out of the truck on the highway. That would really be ideal. Look at the size of the turbo on that thing. That's bigger than your Subaru WRX there, baby. I think when I get there, they're gonna be impressed with my framing job. I think they're gonna say, man, you really know what you're doing. Look, now even my boat has a giant empty void inside of it. We're on our way to Chrisfield. Three hours down to Chrisfield, three hours back now. That's a long drive. There's not much between here and Crisfield. I'm stopping here at Big Truck that's right on the side of 50. Uh, they make an awesome, hard-working beverage for a bunch of hard-working people. All right, we're loaded up with uh, frosty cold beverages for the guys at TNS. Hopefully that'll help soften the blow when the bill comes. I really am nervous about taking this engine into Crisfield. You know, when you go to the doctor and you know something's wrong, and the only things you do know is that it's gonna be expensive, and you know you're gonna get some news you probably don't wanna get. So as a small business owner, I'm not made of money, despite what people might think, because I have a lot of followers doing the crabbing business and everything. Not like I have excess amounts of disposable income. Even a $5,000, $6,000, $10,000 repair bill for me would be a major chunk of change. That's a lot of crabs I gotta move across the rail. Here it is. We're here at the most expensive town in all Maryland, huh? <laughs> Dropping her off, she's in good hands. I have something for you guys too. I can oh, bribe man. you with lots and lots of beer. How's that? Oh, no. Here you go. This is for you, buddy. Take care of her. Oh, thank you. Hard working beer, hard working people. You know what I mean? Right. The deed is done. Got to see some old friends, and I know they're going to do a good job. People ship their motors from literally all over the country, including Alaska, Hawaii, and Guam, all the way to TNS to have them work on it because they are the foremost leading experts on the Cat 32 way. I'm not kidding. I will find out in the next couple weeks what the damage is going to be or what they find or hopefully, Lord willing, everything is totally fine. Pray for me. Finally made it home from Crisfield. It took forever, like four hours, two inches of snow on the ground, and we have not had snow in Maryland in a couple years. Nobody is prepared for it or knows how to drive in it. Another prime example of what it takes to get fresh seafood to your grocery store or wherever you're gonna buy it. It's why it's very important to buy local seafood. And if you can have a relationship with the person that is catching the food that you eat. These are things that every fisherman in town goes through. Just keep that in mind.